Ilian initiated this project. He was a graduate of the National Film School in London and uh, I'd heard that there was going to be a film made around the ambulance service in Sofia and I was trying to track down the person who was making the film so I was very keen on working on it, I thought it was a great idea and uh, I didn't know that I'd already met Ilian actually a few months earlier in London when I was working at Film London previously and uh, he contacted me in the end and I kind of went I would really like to work on this film and he asked, he actually said I'd really like you to work on this film so we became a two-man crew for the next two years. Uh, for me, yeah, it was very emotional. Um, I have a child myself, so there are scenes in the film where you, you know, people, young people as well, are, are hurt and you can't help but become involved. And there were occasions where we put down the sound equipment and the camera and helped carry people out of blocks of flats. And you can kind of understand how these people need coping mechanisms, their sense of humour, because the film does have a lot of humour in it even though obviously it's a very dark subject. You can see that that's how they survive and deal with it themselves and we also became part of that as well. And there's obviously a very a specific scene where you, you, know, you can see that the crew themselves are in danger and obviously we were integral to that. I wasn't wearing a seatbelt at the time you know, we had a crash, as you'll see in the film. Um, so. I was first checking my head while still rolling sound, climbing out, and they were interacting with the person they'd crashed with. So there were literally scenes like that. And you know, there were scenes, there's, there's often times where you're driving in Bulgaria and there's huge potholes in the road and you're swerving around them into the oncoming traffic, along with all the other people rushing to the scene. The basic setup that Ilian decided to use from the start was to have three cameras in the front looking at the driver, the nurse and the doctor, a camera looking at the road and then he had a camera himself that he could move and go on, you know, follow the crew out on cases to addresses. Uh, so there's, you know, five cameras functioning. And then myself as the sound recordist, uh, I had three radio mics, one for each of the participants and then I had my boot, my shotgun mic as well and then after the whole filming stopped I went back to locations and recorded a load more sound because obviously when you're in the thick of it you don't have time to record a wild track or an Atmos track so and sound is obviously a big driving force in the film because a lot happens off screen as we focus on the faces of the doctor, the nurse and the driver so that became a big part of making sure we had the sounds that told the story. Well, Ilian was uh, assembling the film as he went along, so he made like a five minute trailer quite early on and then that expanded into a 20 minute sequence with a number of scenes. And then he did plan to actually get an editor involved and eventually worked on it with his girlfriend, Bettina, uh, as editors, as co-editors. So he, it, he, was, he became obviously so close to the kind of film he wanted to make and to the material and the fact that it's in Bulgarian as well, it was actually quite difficult to find a Bulgarian editor who was, you know, suitable for this kind of film, who was interested in doing it, who had the time. And uh, yeah, it worked out that he made it with, it with Bettina in the end. Well, it's been said by the authorities, you know, by the Health Ministry of Health, that they've been, you know, persuaded by the film to make attempts to improve the system. There are local stations in Sofia now, not just the one place in Stochnagara, which is the main ambulance service. Uh, but at the recent screening in Sofia, uh, Krasi, the, main, the doctor in our film, he said, you know, basically the changes are superficial. Basically there, aren't, there haven't been any significant changes as far as he's concerned as somebody working in the service for 21 years. No, I mean, I, I knew Ilian was talented. I'd seen his previous short film and it had done well at festivals. And I loved the premise. I just loved his whole, you know, he's adamant he was going to do the film this way. I mean, we did film a lot of other stuff. We filmed in a hospital for a lot of long period of time. And I don't see any of that footage in the film. It's quite strange. But it actually returned to his original conception, which was to, you know, focus on their life in the ambulance. And we get hints of what their life outside is, but it's really 
that's the form, you know, and you stick to that. And I was really impressed by that. And I thought, yeah, if, you know, if we make the film and if, it, you know, if we get the scenes, it's a strange thing, you know, you, you do feel a little awkward sometimes about, you know, the excitement of getting a good scene, but at the same time, this, you know, this, this world we're involved in involves tragedy and, you know, struggle and a broken infrastructure at the same time. So for me, it was, you know, it was rewarding to see that people in Sofia and people, you know, in the wider world are seeing the film. And it's not just the fact that the infrastructure is broken in Bulgaria in various different aspects. Um, but you see that there is this passionate commitment in people who do these jobs and take on these roles and try to help people, you know, against, the, against all odds. And that's what we hope we really kind of focus on in the film. And that, I think, you know, is the reason why it connects with an audience, I hope, that there's humour and, you know, a human heart at the centre of the film. Well, yeah. Hmm. It's hard to anticipate what an audience re reaction will be, but we hope that there, you know, maybe we could help, you know, um, close the gulf between people who are angry with the Burza Pomoc, with the ambulance service in Bulgaria, and the, the fact that it's not their fault. The people who are, you know, going out in the ambulances aren't the reason why they're late. The infrastructure and the fact it's broken, the equipment they're working with, sometimes they're given the case hours late and then they have to go. They might arrive within five minutes of getting the case, but it's already been delayed for hours. So for people to understand the conditions under which they're working was, was an important part, you know, within Bulgaria. But then hopefully if people outside Bulgaria see that as well, that puts, hopefully that can put, you know, increase the pressure you know, on the people responsible to make the appropriate changes. I think it's inevitable in terms of the way people consume documentaries. I think it's also very interesting, you know, I just saw Ai Weiwei Never Sorry last night about the Chinese artist and his, you know, the possibilities to affect change and engage with social networks and actually make an impact is incredibly inspiring from, what, from watching that, you know, from watching Amazing Azerbaijan today. So, you know, and also the opportunity to watch films online and become informed on topics, you know, Mm, by, uh, you know, by a number of people who might not have otherwise had access to tell their story before. It's amazingly exciting, I think. That democratisation of documentary filmmaking is very inspiring to me, personally. <laughs>